what this means to you, um, how you find yourself living on a farm, um, what you do as a farm product on a farm, um, how you're used in all manner of ways to produce for the farmer, and of course, how to get off the farm. Um, Throughout today, I have been in contact with Bo from the Bo and Rocco show. His mother uh, is in now in hospice in congestive heart failure. Um, they have her on oxygen and morphine and, of course, Ativan as they kill her and um, make sure that they eke out any and all derivatives off of her body, the use of her body. These things are not pretty to talk about. They are not pretty to see, and a lot of you will have already turned off your feed uh, in cognitive dissonance because you don't want to hear these things. You don't want to know these things. Um, I can tell you I didn't either. In 2000, uh, as they were killing my husband through the same exact process, um, they had maintained to me that he was dehydrated. And in that, they started giving him fluid, which is a saline solution. It had salt water in it. And right after that, of course, he was diagnosed as well with congestive heart failure because salt water allows this to happen. Um, he was also put on lung depressants, which is what morphine does. It depresses the lungs as well as Ativan, and this allows breathing, uh, which is a function of the human body, of course, and a requirement of life and be living. Throughout that span of time, uh, prior to that, I had gone off on the Catholic Diocese because I was working for them. I worked at Harper Creek Youth Services in Erie, Pennsylvania. At the time I was working there, um, I had evidenced sexual abuse of children. I had gone to higher and higher in the chain of employment as a good sheeple citizen and as I went higher and higher of course the force and pressure upon me and my family and around me become greater and greater and greater under the action of fourth generation warfare at the time that I was subject to these things I was not aware of what that was and of course during those times we're not able to be objective because it's happening to us and we are the subject of what is known as shock doctrine or the ability for them to shock us and shut us up lay us back on our asses and keep us down so we don't stand and rise against them so this time because this is a pattern of behavior I've been exposed to for over the last 13 years, I'm going to read on into the Association of Corporate Counsel. The leadership of the Association of Corporate Counsel, of course, this is not in order. The chair is David Allgood, Executive Vice President and General Counsel, Royal Bank of Canada. The Vice Chair is John Page, Senior Vice President, Chief Corporate Social Responsibility Officer and CLO, Golden State Food Corporation. Treasurer Sabine Chalmers, Chief Legal and Communications Officer, Anheuser Bush. Secretary William Saylor, Senior Vice President, Legal Counsel, Qualcomm Incorporated. Director Ona Alston Dasanumu, General Counsel, the Brookings, Institu Brookings Institute. Director Susan Blount, Senior Vice President, General Counsel, Prudential Insurance Company of America. 
Director Jeffrey Carr, Senior Vice President, General Counsel and Secretary, FMC Technologies Incorporated. Director L. Sean Cheadle, General Counsel, Military Space, Lockheed Martin Space Sim Systems Company. Director Kathleen Catherine Chisholm, Senior Vice President, General Counsel and Corporate Secretary, Capital Power Corporation. Director Nancy Cohan, Vice President and Senior Division Counsel, this SD Lauder Companies Incorporated. Director N. Alexander Erlum, General Counsel, the Vertical Screen Group of Companies. Director Matthew Fawcett, Senior Vice President, General Counsel, NetApp Incorporated. Director Elisa Garcia C, Executive Vice President, General Counsel, Office Depot Incorporated. Director Vincent Gonzalez, Senior Environmental and Counsel, Southern California Gas Company. Director Daniel Harper, Associate General Counsel, Canon Solutions America, Incorporated. Director Kristen Hewitt, Senior v Vice President, Core Affairs, General Counsel and Corp Sep Secretary, Whirlpool Corporation. Director Mary Kennard, Vice President and General Counsel, American University. Director Owen Lee Frapper, Chief Legal Officer, Gulf Bridge International. Director William Morden, Senior Vice President and Group General Counsel, Reckett Beckkisser Group, PLC. Director Jonathan Oviatt, Chief Legal Officer and Secretary, Mayo Clinic. Director Eric Rison, Senior Vice President and Deputy General Counsel, Sally May Incorporated. Director Bradford Smith, Senior Vice President and General Counsel, Microsoft Corporation. Director Deirdre Stanley, Executive Vice President and General Counsel, Thompson Reuters. Director Tig Thomas, Chief Legal Officer, Tater LLC, YourKidVid.com. Director Alan K. C., Executive Vice President, General Counsel, Churchill Downs, Incorporated. Director Leslie Turner, Senior Vice President, General Counsel, and Secretary of the Hershey Company. Director Norman Wayne, General Counsel, Chief of Business Affairs, USA Track and Field. Director Danette Weinberg, Attorney. Ex officio Veta Richardson, President and CEO, Association of Corporate Counsel. Now what you just listened to was the people directing your body's movement through the medical industry, psychological industry, and criminal industries, including the legal kidnapping of your children, including your foreclosures, including your cancer diagnoses, including your heart disease diagnoses, including everything that occurs upon your body in everyday life and be living the corporate council is the people who are directing these things against you and all of humanity in the action of genocide if you would like to learn more about artificial intelligence intelligence creations intelligence productions from the intelligence production company known as the CIA Please go to AARC Public Library Contents, Book 4, Supplementary Detailed Staff Reports on Foreign and Military Intelligence, and read that. Those were one of the Church Committee reports on, as per what's going on. Now, I know that a lot of you are new listeners, so I will start out with a warning. If you are a new listener, please go listen to our archives. <clears throat> found on Revolution Radio there at YouTube so that you may catch up because um, at this point in time it is imperative that I share with our listeners um, what this is. Um, the House of Representatives is actually a marquee. Um, a marquee of course um, is defined as a tent. It's a carnival of sorts. And what has been maintained upon humanity since around 1180 is a carnival. It's a show. It is a fiction and illusion. And it's maintained by the, at this time, Broadcasting Board of Governors who control all international civil media exposure. Media is a weight. It doesn't maintain that that's the television or radio broadcasts. 
That means it's a weight of information, including but not limited to encyclopedias, Bibles, religious texts, magazines, and other commercial productions maintained to control humanity as per policy and agenda. The literal translation of law means to lay down. The metaphor of Jesus, G-E space S-U-I-S, refers to your earth. That is the story of your crucifixion. You are crucified by casting lots or taking up titles, being called something. These titles are maintained by psychological influence. They're called concepts. The concept of man, woman, male, female, mom, dad, friend, lover, teacher, doctor, what have you, those are all concepts. When you take up a title, you are crucified by casting lots. The entity crucifying you is the corporate counsel, attorneys, psychologists, psychiatrists, and others moving you about by the use of media influence. This is the game of chess and the game of risk. The court of exchequer is what you are living in. You are on a board. The court of exchequer is described in the dialogue on the exchequer. And let me get to that. <clears throat> the dialogue concerning the exchequer, sorry. Um, what this stems from is the Gelnhausen Charter. The House of Geln at one time decided that since your memory was short and you had short attention spans that they could tell you anything and you would believe it. If you believe that, they went a step further and they implicated a new law. If you believe that and those concepts, they went further and they used a new law against you. These laws or the or origin stems from lexicon, meaning with law. Those are your original dictionaries. Dictionaries dictate to you what you are, what you can be, what you should be, what you ought to be, what you could be or otherwise would be by, of course, action of law. These things circle around you and they are used in the action of domestic terrorism through fourth generation warfare, low intensity conflict, policy, and agenda to, excuse me, to maintain you as a farm animal on a farm. The original charter seceded all of your estates because you claim that you were something else. You are a state of being. All of these things applied against you is to derive revenue off of your productive value. This thing is known as the silent weapon for quiet wars. The silent weapon shoots situations at you. You will find yourself dying through the medical industry, sick, filled with disease or discomfort based on the foods that you are eating, based on the legality of certain things that you are accustomed to as human beings. For example, throughout history, they have described the female as hysterical. This hysterical nature of the female is, of course, not a nature at all. This is maintained by the action of making sex illegal. And when I say sex illegal, this means that they are promoting the homosexual agenda. They are promoting that males are villainous. They are promoting that females are somehow the cause of all these things. As the psychopathic female has stepped up to maintain the voice of the female, of course, through such as now and other organizations. What human beings are now suffering is actually call, called somatoform under the action of soma. That is soma theory if you want to look that up. 
everybody's suffering because they're not experiencing human touch they are not experiencing human compassion they are not experiencing reality or relativity they are watching television programming and what that is of course is the weight described as media whereby you can sit on your living room sofa or a chair in your living area watch television and believe you are surrounded by people based on this experience when you think you're surrounded by people watching television or listening to radio broadcasts the minute you turn that off you feel lonely alone empty and absolutely lost so of course you are either going to turn it back on or you are going to seek medical attention human touch through doctors you are going to seek um, psychiatric services wondering why you feel depressed and pressed down upon by this oppressive force by these laws this is how you are engineered this is engineered society you are being engineered to be politically correct that is not correct as to humanity that is good for politics although you are not a politic or a policy Oh, um, these things are overwhelming to the mind of course um, automatically the human being exposed to reality or a new truth is experiencing what is known as cognitive dissonance within cognitive dissonance you are going to go away you are not going to hear me you are not going to be able to um, process any new information however you will at a later date even if you separate now and you turn off your radio or whatever you will come back to this at a later date whatever works for you as long as you come back the way to get away from that is to first of all turn off the television programming turn off radio broadcasting and enter into humanity or be with the human race the psychopath has very distinct characteristics one of the first is they have no human empathy second is they like to be identified by titles and entitlement they will garner you with sad stories they will garner you with painful stories and experiences from their past they will reach out for you to save them in this society the male is indoctrinated with the doctrine of chivalry maintaining that you are to save the PC product don't do that male instinct means that you protect women and children and each other when there's a need based on reaction that has nothing to do with chivalry chivalry has been taught to you to promote the aspect of the PC female in that now instead of saving men women and children you're out saving the plastic female or the pretend female the psychopath when she breaks a nail or she has a bad day and she's whining okay that is not real that is not real emotions she is um, subscribing to emoting based on uh, plastic things that are occurring around her a bad day is nothing in comparison to harm upon a human being sorry about the dead air folks um, things are hectic um, uh, where were we um, the um, exchequer <clears throat> this is a game of chess of course um, I'm having difficult issues here with my uh, internet uh, oh boy hmm so we'll come back to that later um, the um, all over the media today um, the Associated Press um, 
Ohio man tells jurors he shot longtime wife in her hospital bed after perceiving she was in pain. This was normal at one time before medical intervention, um, psychiatric care and help that you receive from the medical industry. That was normal. Um, we used to, if we were dying, we would walk away from our families and go off to pasture and just find a place to be um, in peace. We didn't uh, subscribe to all of these concepts and ideologies and everything else to the benefit of attorneys, um, policy, politics, lawmakers, and other psychopaths that get off on our pain and, and um, injury. Um, home prices rise in most U.S. metro areas, uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, what a joke, um, there's just so many things, um, battle brewing over cost comparison site for colleges, of course everybody's going to say, well, no, I want to be specialized, no, pick me, pick me, I want to be special, I want to be special. If you go back to the 1802 Indemnification Convention and um, the creation of um, commission governments and then you go read the Acts of Enablement and the corporate structure and what happened uh, back when Congress pretended to be a church or a religious belief, um, you'll find that that was already your land that those colleges are built on. Those are your colleges and that... Uh, Congress donating the land to itself did nothing except for create regions and districts by which to maintain you by core process. Um, subscribing to, of course, the exchequer, the game of chess and the game of risk. Now, when you overlap the two, you've got the um, strategic uh, uh, maintenance of the game of chess. And with risk, you're stacking risk. I mean, that, that's the whole game. Attorneys come in, uh, when they purchase sureties, they are maintaining um, a risk factor. And as that risk is stacked, it makes the game funner and funner and funner. So, of course, there's more money involved. You know, if you're sitting around a game or a, a table playing poker, it's the same thing. So you've got a great hand, and so you're throwing money in the center of the table, and, and somebody else thinks they have a great hand, so they're throwing more money in. That's a game of risk. You're, you're um, gambling. It's, it's, a, it's a gamble. And that takes us to the accountability. And, and of course, uh, agents that are listening and attorneys that are listening aren't going to have this. Um, it, it's not going to be fun for them. The Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution maintains that you can do this. You can act under acts of commerce, private acts. However, the game of risk, it has to have risk on the other side, honey. So what has happened is that you can do that all you want, but the risk is maintained based on the fact that at some point you might get caught. Well, that time came this year, and... Um, the Commerce Clause maintains that you can act under acts of commerce and private acts all you want. However, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act and the Restrictive Principle of Sovereign Immunity maintains that if you are caught, you are without immunity and without any sovereignty. And that is risk. Um, and that's a, uh, the uh, most beautiful thing for me because I have absolutely, absolutely no compassion for psychopathy. I have no mercy. I have no thought as to what you do to yourself, what you do to each other, or what others do to you um, after you maintained the onslaught against humankind. That was at your discretion. And it was done willingly uh, with knowledge. Uh, this last year has been quite profound. I've been doing this for 13 years. Um, however, this last year, you know, to make sure during this case, each time, each step we took, uh, we were allowing you, uh, administrators, attorneys, and other psychopaths, to pull your hands out at any time. And so each time we would come in and we'd say, well, 
are you sure you know what you're doing here? Look, you're human trafficking, or look, you're kidnapping, um, or, uh, you know, otherwise maintaining profit off of the human being. And each time uh, we got a response back that said, hey, look, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just in it for the risk. Well, if you're not aware of what risk is, there has to be that other uh, polarity. And here I am. So, that being said, <clears throat> you are now being held accountable. You are now in the holding corporation. And sadly, um, what I finally decided, what we finally decided and came to the conclusions of is that you like this. You have employed all of this upon humankind. You have chosen and consented to this form of government. And in review of the 1941 Atlantic Charter that Roosevelt and Winston Churchill signed, uh, granting Congress global um, governance, it maintains that you will choose your form of government. Now, that is a very, very um, loosely maintained term because it actually isn't the building or or isn't the the concept itself it government means the action of governing and and a lot of people are going to think i'm really evil here but uh back at the uh korean war just after the korean war congress had implemented uh, various projects in Korea, North Korea, they had walled it off and to to um, make a long story short, when they walled it off, they took a whole bunch of rats that they observed was rats, but these are human beings, and they locked them inside of North Korea. Uh, they gave them various amounts of um, monies and things and then pit them against each other. Well, they took this small model group, it's a model theory, and they moved this over to the United States Incorporated after they found that it was an efficient way of generating revenue. And this is called the uh, Pyongyang Project, um, also the Korea, Illinois Project. And when they implicated it in a two, and put it into action in Illinois. They did it first through the public school system to teach children to basically be psychopaths. Now, these actions were really, really funny for administrators. These actions were really, really good for attorneys and other people that were benefiting off of these horrifying things, maintaining human beings as rats in a cage. And as they observed their behaviors, um, and you can see this through the uh, National Education Program, for example, um, you know, they, they were observing what children do when you do stuff against them. Those are the longitudinal studies. So um, if you rip a child out of its mother's arms or its father's arms, they were observing these reactive behaviors and fine-tuning the behavioral uh, modification of humanity as a whole to find the most efficient product. Now, yes, that's horrifying. However, uh, what had happened in July, well, May 1st, is that we entered into the agreed order with Northern Holdings and Trust. I mean, they agreed with us. Um, July, we sent that off to the uh, State Department, Secretary of State, which of course is a clearinghouse to offset congressional bankruptcy, whereby all of the directives are in place. And again, going back to the 1941 Atlantic Charter, you have agreed to that form of government. That is what you have entered into. That is what you are patronizing. And so the Korean model becomes your model. And um, there are other things that are as to state security that I cannot get into at this time. Um, however, I think that all of the agents, psychopaths, attorneys, 
uh, doctors, administrators, psychiatrists, and, and others who have maintained profit off of humankind are going to find themselves having a very difficult day. Um, it's going to be um, relative to Job. So if uh, I advise all of the agents and, and others to go ahead and go read the story of Job because that is now you. It is not humanity. It will not be humanity any further or any longer. Is it? It's no longer tolerated. Um, this generation, this schematic, and, and uh, these games that psychopaths play will no longer be maintained upon human beings. Uh, that will be first and foremost. And um, as I said, you guys have all had public notice. Uh, there is no due process, by the way. Uh, your uh, representatives, your counsel, have all forsaken you. Your your daddy there, they have all forsaken you. You've been uh, put into the chute by your chosen form of government influence. And I think that was the uh, most disgusting is to watch them roll on you. Um, you know, we tried to save everybody. We, we, we've let everybody know. Uh, we were notifying, uh, you know, such as your Speaker of the House, uh, Boyner. He's had, I don't know how long he's had these uh, documents and orders. And if he hasn't shared them with you, you might uh, want to uh, request uh, he produce those documents. Uh, Joseph Biden, uh, the president of the Senate, got his, uh, I think we received the receipt on October 7th for the latest round. And um, from what I can see, they are not making their what appears to be plebeians aware of of what's happening and what's going on and so they are going to allow um, all of the minions to be cannibalized and you know we've tried to keep you in the loop we've tried to tell you what was coming we tried to explain to you the reasons that you should get away from that other daddy there and um, it's down to the wire I mean there's no more time um, we can see this in the news and as soon as my um, internet is better um, I will have those things um, uh, you know I'll, I'll share those things um, yeah it's just it's been a very overwhelming experience the last couple of months of course uh, as this has come down the pike. Um, the pressure has been absolutely extreme to get us to shut up, uh, to get us to go away, to get us to do anything but what we were doing and what we have done, and it didn't work. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, I have one set of rules, and it's basically First Corinthians 13. It maintains that I'm supposed to take it all. I'm supposed to suffer all things, bear all things, um, as well as hoping and believing all things. And so whatever you have to throw, um, just call me a pillow because I'm not stopping until you kill me. And of course, uh, that's paying off now. Um, you are being held accountable. Uh, you will be further held accountable as we are seeing across the board. Um, your administrators, uh, I mean, I've, these last few weeks, I've been watching, you know, the administration and the, um, especially in, you know, such as Kerry and, and others <coughs> who are promoting the uh, global development pro uh, productions, and um, they're not speaking a word to their agents. They're not letting you know what's coming. They're, they're just letting you be sidelined as they pick you up and they use you as a fall guy. And um, is it fair? I don't even like that word. No? And, and for me personally, um, 
because we gave everybody notice, we kept you in the loop. Um, you know, and, and knowing that you still continued to walk with intent to harm humanity, um, I have no sympathy. I have absolutely no sympathy for you. You know, I, I was so egregiously, um, you know, attacked by my own mother, by my own family members, by whom I... I was um, assuming we're friends, you know, at one time, and as the years went by, I got to learn so many things about the psychopath and the beneficiary or whatever you want to call these uh, jokes and actors that um, enjoy um, nothing more than uh, their benefits, their perceived benefits and selling each other out, selling out your own children, selling out your sons and daughters, um, selling out your brothers and sisters, you know, these things are, they, they don't, they come with a price, and these little strippings that you have received, social security benefits, or veterans pay, or, or whatever else, um, the price is with your body, because what you had chosen was that form of government and and that is evidenced by your works and actions so everything that you've done upon mankind it comes back on you except for there's less of you so it, it that's where it comes in and Jesus was trying to say that so long ago it comes back on you tenfold but the reason for that is because there's less psychopathy than there is humanity and so they have to get it out of you ten times what they would have normally for a human being and sadly that was the government that you chose um, it is not up to me I know that many of you will be so angry with me and and gunning for me as you have been attorneys have always been gunning for me um, the last few years they've tried to take me out I don't know how many times um, but it's out of my hand these this is evidenced of course by your works and actions so everything that you did and everything that you've evidenced by what you've done these things come back on you it doesn't come back on me um, I know yesterday I was having a conversation with somebody and he he was basically telling me, I want the answer, I want the answer now, I want it now, you're not really a teacher, you don't tell me this, 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 or this. Well, what I am is I teach the self, and I teach your authority. However, the only thing I cannot do is hand you yourself. I cannot give you yourself, you can do that, only you can do that. And... Um, being angry with me and yelling at me it doesn't do anything there's no possible way that I could just pick you up and hand you yourself you have to find yourself and you have to stand in your authority I can't stand in your authority I can only teach you what you are I can only show you what you are I can show you all of these things that are done upon you and and um, all of these things they've done in order to put you down and, and put you on your knees. But I can't pull you off of the other daddy and I cannot give you yourself. I can teach and teach and teach and teach. But if you don't hear me, um, there's nothing I can do. And I am sorry for those things. Um, let's see. The corporate council... Um, we went over that uh, last night I was talking or I was um, listening to the Bo and Rocco show and they had o Otis Davidson on there and um, it was interesting because he was talking about the RF technology and radio frequency and being irritated and being thrown off and having his memory you know not being there and <clears throat> and all of these things. Now, if you go to, um, it's a company called MKS, Technology for Productivity, and you can Google these things. If you Google, such as the RF impedance matching networks, 
um, you'll find one of them that they use in the courtrooms in the courthouse. Um, they look like a lot of the times they look like uh, computer towers, you know, um, just basic uh, computer towers that would be attached to any personal uh, desktop. Um, some of them look like CBs, maybe. Some of them look like scanners, police scanners. And all they do is produce uh, radio frequencies and different uh, frequencies, variants on frequency, by which to irritate you and to keep you um, from not only remembering, but also from realizing what's going on. They're always going to put you down, especially if you put yourself inside of a courtroom, which we do not uh, advocate. We say, no, don't go into court. It's just a show. Of course, it's the marquee. Um, the advertisement, you, you can download it from uh, this MKS corporation here, um, maintains our power products. This, the MKS ENI products family of our plasma generators covers the full range of frequencies to, to from 2 megahertz to VHF and power ranges from 300 watts to 13,000 watts designed for high quality density with extra headroom ENIR products provide field proven reliability and exceptional stability. Now if you are under a lot of stress and, and um, irritation and those types of things we do recommend that you wear something of wool um, even a woolen scarf around the neck um, to take away all of the influence. The wool will absorb radio frequency. It's not the, you know, the most efficient because you should be, you know, removing yourself from the location, the physical location of the frequency. However, if you're not able to, um, I suggest you try to absorb that as much as you can with wool. And, um, a lot of people may not realize they have the old army blankets at their homes. Um, you have wool scarves, uh, socks, gloves, whatever you need to do to get out from from the um, irritation and uh, construct of all of these things upon you. Uh, grab whatever you can and you'll notice a significant uh, difference in your thinking, thought patterns. Um, First of all, uh, sometimes it'll make you dizzy. It depends on the frequency they're using. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you're not clumsy. You know, uh, when you're falling down and things like that, uh, you know, they'll ask you, did you did you have a lapse in memory? Well, yeah, because they've just shot you with our frequency. And, and find out because, you know, maybe you've broken bones. Or whatever else um, when you've fallen and, and if you fall over and over and over again and you're having memory lapses and everything else please please move your location get wool try to absorb the, the R frequency and you will stop falling the, these things are all produced for you um, drop your insurance that's one of the surefire ways of stopping these pressures around you uh, the medical and psychological industries relies on the ability to pay for these things um, stop paying for insurance that's guaranteeing that these things are going to occur against you and that's the foundation of the genocide program of Obamacare and those are actions of Congress although it's called Obamacare Obama is only their speaker he's like a, the face of Congress or the clergy of Congress he's only maintaining their word and um, these are congressional acts. Of course, Congress stems from with transgression. Um, I know we're coming up on the break, I believe. And after the break, when we come back, uh, we'll speak more on radio frequency. Because last night, Otis had brought up the um, RF guns. And a lot of people are not aware that these actually exist. He was speaking about the ability to cause heart attacks and things like that. And yes, those things do exist. Um, you can read about them all over and uh, we'll go into that uh, right after the break here as soon as the beep comes up. Um, 
What else was I going to speak about? Uh, the exchequer. I'm, I don't think that I can bring that up yet. I'm going to have to, during the break, I'll uh, try to get this rebooted and fix the problem. Um, also, <clears throat> the, um, you know, of course, the exchequer. I've got my notes here. <clears throat> There's two levels of the exchequer of the chess game as to the nature or arrangement of the lower one according to the separate offices. And that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with people in official capacities, of course. Um, of course, this is out of the dialogue on the exchequer. So it's it's a dialogue. It's like a play, right, reading a play. So the disciple uh, says, what is the nature of or arrangement of the lower exchequer? And the master says, as I, see, as I see, thou canst not bear to be ignorant of any of these things. Know then that the lower exchequer has its person distinct from each other by reason of their offices, but with one intent devoted to the interests of the king, due regard never, nevertheless being paid to equity, all serving moreover not in their own names, but in the names of their masters. With the exception of two knights, he namely who conducts the essays and the melter. Their offices depend on the will of our king, hence they seem to belong rather to the upper than to the lower exchequer, as will be explained below. The clerk of the treasurer is there with his seal. There are also two knights in the chamberlains. There is also a certain king who may be called the silverer, for by reason of his office he presides at the testing of silver. There is also, also the melter who tests the silver. There are also four tellers to count the money. There is also the usher of the treasury and the watchman. These, moreover, are their offices. The clerk of the treasurer, when the money has been counted and put in boxes by the hundred pounds, affixes his seal and puts down in writing how much he has received and from whom, and for what cause. He registers also the tallies which have been made by the chamberlains concerning that receipt. Not only, moreover, does he place his seal on the sacks of money, but also he wishes on the chests and on the separate boxes in which the rolls and tallies are placed. And he diligently supervises all the offices which are under him, and nothing is hidden from him. The office of the knights, who are also called chamberlains, because they serve in the name of the chamberlains, is this. They carry the keys of the chests, for each chest has two locks of a different kind, that is, to neither of which the key of the other can be fitted, and they carry the keys of them. Each chest, moreover, is girded with a certain immovable strap, on which, in addition where the locks are closed, the seal of the treasure is placed, so that neither of the chamberlains can have access except by common consent. Likewise, it is their duty, duty to weigh the money which has been counted and placed by the hundred shillings in wooden receptacles, so that there be no error in the amount and then at length to put them in boxes by the hundred pounds, as has been said. But if a receptacle is found to have any deficiency, that which is brought to be lacking, thought to be lacking, is, may, is not made good by calculation, but straight away the doubtful one is thrown back into the heap which is to be counted. And take note that certain counties from the time of King Henry I and in the time of King Henry II could lawfully offer payment coins of any kind of money, provided they were of silver and did not differ from the lawful weight. Now, in the mind right now, as you're reading this, you're, you're constantly shifting back and forth between county and county as a geographical state. However, the county, the, that word actually stemmed from counting of human beings. That's where you are counted at, the counter. So going back um, and take note that certain counties from the time of King Henry I and the time of King Henry II could lawfully offer f for payment coins of any kind of money provided they were of silver and did not differ from the lawful weight. Because indeed by ancient custom, not themselves having money ears, they sought their coins from all, on all sides. Such are Northumberland and Cumberland, Joins thus received, moreover, although they came from a farm, were ne nevertheless set apart from the others with some marks on them. 
placed on them, but the remaining counties were accustomed to bring only the usual and lawful coin of the present money as well as from farms as from pleas. But after the illustrious king, whose renown shines the brighter in great matters, did in his, re in his reign institute one weight and one money for the whole kingdom, each county began to be bound by one necessity of law and to be constrained by the manner of payment of a general commerce. All, therefore, in whatever manner they are bound or pay the same kind of money, but nevertheless, all do not sustain the loss which comes from the testing by combustion. That's the story of Job. You're put under fire, correct? Okay, so you've got all of this bound by the necessity of law. Now, if you go back to the doctrines of necessity, it maintains that whatever is not lawful shall be made so by necessity. So... If going all the way back to the um, the rule of usufruct, the usufruct, the capacity shall never diminish. That's the only rule. So there's three forms of production on this planet. Taxation and consumption is one third of the global GDP. Medicine, psychology, and death is one third of the global GDP. And criminalization is one third of the global GDP. Now all of those things is the usufruct. The usufruct can never be diminished, so the capacity of the usufruct can never be diminished. That means that they're going to come up against you with morality, which makes you pay taxes or makes you be a good boy or a good girl. They're going to come up with you against you with psychology and medicine and death, of course, through the medical industry, psychological industry, or criminalization. So if you're not producing by taxation and consumption, you're not out there buying a whole bunch of things and you're not paying your taxes, you're going to be criminalized. And if you're not paying taxes and you're not a criminal and you're not producing in jail or in prisons or in an institutionalized state, you're going to be made sick or you're going to be diagnosed as, you know, uh, mentally incompetent or whatever they need to do to allow you to produce. The capacity of the usufruct is never diminished. So you're always producing no matter what. They're always on you side by side. By side. And we'll be back after the breaks, folks. Stick around. Continued support. Um, um, let me get back to this here. Yeah, let me see where I was. Okay, during the break, I finally got to my... Um, Thing, kind of okay so I wanted to explain in between normally I have access to my internet without any uh, fetter or constraint and that was not happening before the break and it probably was user error of course um, the word Chamberlain and these are important for everybody to realize what these things are uh, because all of this is a show of course um, it's all maintained by the marquee, which is what you know as House or House of Representatives, House of anything. And in the explanation and the dialogue of the exchequer, it was mentioning uh, being of the Chamberlain. And the etymology of Chamberlain comes from French, Old French, Chamberlain, uh, meaning Chamberlain, steward, treasurer. Uh, from Germanic source, of course, Kamerling, Old High German Charm, Char, Charmerling, which is also uh, Charlemagne. You know, when you go back all the way to the etymology and go back to Latin, Chamberlain stems from the word camera, meaning chamber or room. And so you've got this grand marquee, this grand illusion, this show that's put on for you. And, and Shakespeare had told us this, which is very interesting when you go back to the original charters. Um, Shakespeare said, all the world is a stage. And it is. You are in the House, of course, House of Representatives. The geographical states that have been created by Act of Congress, these are acts. These are acts written by playwrights. And in these acts, you're the little actor. You're being pushed around by, of course, the Association of Corporate Counsel, General Counsel, 
uh, board of commissioners who have been commissioned to maintain the show and to use you as product to maintain these derivatives, these amounts, these revenue streams, um, the internal revenue service that sits in the middle of the 13 colonies maintained by Congress, which is the internal aspect. Revenue can only be generated. It's not a tax. Taxes are collected. And going from that, you are the tax. Tax is actually a noun. You are that tax being collected. And what that action is actually called appropriations. You are being appropriated. They are appropriating funds. They are appropriating you or taking you. It's action of taking since your secession, since they took over your estate. Um, going back to the dialogue concerning the exchequer, this is written in 1180 along with the Gelnhausen Charter, and I'll get into that in, if we have time tonight. Um, part 1, what the Exchequer is and what is the reason of its name. Now again, this is a dialogue. So the disciple says, what is the Exchequer? Master says, the Exchequer is a quadrangular surface about 10 feet in length, 5 in breadth, place before those who sit around it in a manner of a table. And all around it, it has an edge about the height of one's four fingers, lest anything placed upon it should fall off. There is placed over the top of the exchequer, moreover, a cloth brought at the Easter term. Not an ordinary one, but one with bl but a black one marked with stripes. These stripes being distant from each other over the space of a foot or the breadth of a hand. In the spaces, moreover, are counters placed according to their values. About the, these we shall speak below. Although, moreover, such a surface is called exchequer, nevertheless, this name is so changed about that the court itself, which sits when the exchequer does, is called exchequer. So that, if at any time, through a decree, anything is established by common council, it is said to have been done at the exchequer of this or that year. As, moreover, one says today at the exchequer, so one formally said at the tallies. The disciple then asks, what is the reason of this name? Master replies, no truer one occurs to me at present than that it has the shape similar to that of a chessboard. The disciple says, what would the prudence of the ancients ever have called it so for its shape alone when it might, for a similar reason, be called a table or a tabularum? And Master says, I was right in calling the painstaking. There is another but a more hidden reason for just... In the game of chess, there are certain grades of combatants, and they proceed or stand still by certain laws or limitations, some presiding and others advancing. So, in this, some preside, some assist by reason of their office, and no one is free to exceed the fixed laws as will be manifest from what is to follow. Moreover, as in chess, the battle is fought between kings. So in this, it is chiefly between two that the conflict takes place and the war is waged. The treasurer, namely, and the sheriff who sits there to render account, the others sitting by as judges to see and to judge. The disciple says, Will the accounts be received then by the treasurer? Although there are many there who, by reason of their power, are greater. The master replies, That the treasurer ought to receive the account from the sheriff is manifest from this. That the same is required from him whenever it pleases the king, nor could that be required of him which he had not received. Some say, nevertheless, that the treasurer and the chamberlains should be bound in alone for what is written in the rolls in the treasury, and that for this an account should be demanded of them. But it is believed with more truth that they should be responsible for the whole writing of the roll, as will be readily understood from what is to follow. Earlier 
earlier I had read part two, that there is a lower one and an upper one, both have the same origin, however. And the reason I've read this and these things tonight, this night, is that the, in the game of chess, in, the, in this game of the exchequer, as it maintains in the first section, there is only one game. And there are fixed rules and laws for the game. Now, everyone watching our case has not seen like the show that the Broadcasting Board of Governors puts on and they haven't seen these bells and whistles to say that we've won and, and there's no document that's going to say that we've won. However, in the game of chess, in the game of exchequer, there are but these rules. And the winner is Roman law. It's winner take all. It's not piecemeal. It's not coming in seeking damages. It's not coming in and claiming to be injured in any way or seeking a strip end. Under Roman law and the rules of exchequer, it is winner take all. And the game has shifted. And in these things, um, there are so many things that have befallen humanity at their hands and so many things that they are being held accountable for now. However, the majority will not know because, um, and according to state security, I need to watch my tongue at this time as well, um, uh, by consent is how these things occur. These things occur based on consent and um, the uh, expected reactions of the entity that's being used to play the game. And um, in these things, of course, the psychopath will always seek title. And the only way to um, hold this psychopath accountable for their works and actions is this way. Uh, and that's what my process was all about. It, it's you have to shift it according to the, the laws of physics in all actuality because, you know, you have this one chess board, you have the one exchequer with very limited set of rules, but these rules govern all things. And if you don't do it precisely and efficiently, then it doesn't shift. You're just on the board itself rather than being the um, entity facilitating the movement of the players on the board. And... Um, this is all taught by Jesus. Jesus spoke this um, throughout Matthew, throughout his walk in, in um, Corinth, you know, and all of that time. It was so hard on the, the others um, at that time because of the language barriers. You know, the, the um, Babylonian theory teaches 12 different languages, but not of the tongue. It's of the uh, psychological design. So there's, there's different languages for variant um, degrees of uh, psychological influence or psychiatric influence, which is what maintains everything on this planet. And the level of what you've gone through is based on your acceptance or partaking of the concepts themselves. And um, hopefully, you know, humanity has heard us and they have walked away from, from contracting with these things uh, because that's all it takes uh, really uh, and I was going to read the Gelnhausen charter, charter as well let me get that up <clears throat> while I have access to the to the internet at least for the this moment anyway um, we've been having issues the last few days um, although the weather hasn't been bad or anything um, Earlier, when I was reading from the um, Exchequer, which I've since closed, uh, as apparently um, the dialogue at the of the Exchequer, you know, of course it's 1180. So is the Gelnhausen Charter. And when you start going back into quote history, you're going to find a lot of things that allow the cognitive dissonance to occur because these laws 
are relative to Jesus's walk in the Bible and they don't match up according to the timeline that you've been given by the psychiatrist because um, you know as we teach here time is also a construct of psychology and psychiatry uh, based on ability to cognize or recognize itself over and over and over again you're being taught to live in different realms based on the action of psychology itself or psychiatry itself so um, all of these different time constructs exist through the action and implication of uh, psychological imposition as well as Babylon, Babylonian theory and, and the use of language moving you around uh, um, in the mind as well. That, 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 that's the foundation of courts themselves. Um, when you go into uh, neuroscience, the corpus callosum is actually the big body of the brain. That's what that is. It's, it's called big body corpus callosum. Well, what they had done is through the implication of shock doctrine and um, such as Stockholm syndrome, honeymooning, and all of the cognitive dissonance and everything else, um, through the, the action of these shocks and, and um, alterations of the mindset and, and cognizance itself or recognizance, they have uh, separated the mind or the brain into parts, parted it out, and that, that's spoken of um, as well in the, the um, walk of Jesus. He speaks about being rendered, and that's rendering the, the mind. Well, in these courts, the corpus callosum is separated out into diestri and cura, which is districts and circuits. And, of course, you know those as district and circuit courts. And this stems from uh, what is written in the um, separation of the spiritual and, and the temporal at 1100. And... Um, that is the traumatization of a human being by which to control it. So at that time, the bishops were allowed to take your body. And, and of course, bishop, bishop maintains this is a life ship. Everybody's hopping on board. Well, why are they patronizing this thing if it's the one that's harming them? Well, they don't know that that's the thing that's harming them, and but they know that something is harming them. And so that traumatization and shock doctrine implicated against them or upon them um, prevents them from being able to uh, maintain in the relative state and to rely on the authority of the self because the self is being removed upon that trauma. You're being circumcised at birth. You're being sexually abused in the church. You're being sexually abused in the school system. You're being sexually abused by attorneys, judges, psychiatrists. Um, your parents are being killed in front of you. Your families are being slaughtered. You're having war brought upon you in different parts of the globe uh, through this uh, political action. And of course, if you want a copy of this, you could probably contact the NSA and ask them for a copy as, of course, they're interceding in my broadcast, which is a violation of 18 U.S.C. subsection 794, and this is called espionage, and you will be held accountable. So back to the Gelnhausen Charter of April 13th, 1180 A.D., of course, these dates um, are following the, <clears throat> not only the, walk of Jesus around that time, which is hard for most listeners to wrap their minds around until they get in depth into the study of actuality and the reality of when these laws were implicated. Um, 1180, of course, follows the um, uh, Bull of Pope. Well, the Bull of Pope was actually in, in response to whoever the first Jesus was, whoever was standing up against them. And, um, of course, his reaction is in reaction to the Coronation Charter. And all of these things were occurring around that time. Um, I know that physically we can determine that this has happened every 300 years for the last 900 years. Um, when we go back into the law, the use of law, the actions that preceded and the action that followed. And so um, 
in my own relativity, it was approximately 1140 when Jesus was being written about and Jesus was walking through Corinth, um, walking amongst um, these individuals and fighting him because that were fighting him or her um, based on such as the Coronation Charter itself. Uh, the Coronation Charter uh, or Charter of Liberties, which of course liberty can only be granted, um, is when the females were taken and just shadowed. They had lost their husbands and all of the estates were taken over uh, by the king at that time. And what was what's most profound to read is, um, you know, coming from then until now and being able to speak these things because the coronation charter of course is one of the most horrifying things that I've ever read or, or seen in comparison and in when you compare it side by side with Matthew 27 and the crucifixion of Christ and Matthew the book of Matthew itself as you're walking through the book and Jesus is is um, you know talking to the disciples and the disciples had come to him and, and asked him about, you know, very specific things that were happening to the widows at that time. And, um, of course, that, that pokes on my own relativity. My husband was killed in 2000, um, and there were reasons why he was murdered. Um, you know, and it's like reading of my own self in, in a, a lot of ways. Um, at the coronation charter, the king had taken over the um, estates, maintaining that if your husband should die, I'll hold on to your property, and then I'll dole it out to you as long as you keep yourself pure. Well, Jesus was arguing against them in Matthew, maintaining, well, in the resurrection, when he's able to stand, she no longer has to be passed around. She's no longer passed around. She's no longer going to be subject to, to these things because there's no predator there and the most profound thing when you compare the two and you you see what's gone on throughout history at the time that the king came in to maintain that and the sheeple agreed with that all of the males were murdered all of the males were slaughtered so that the king and his cronies were able to hold the female in shadow since that point in time now, when you go to the Gelnhausen Charter, um, April 13th, 1180, of course, that side by side with the Court of Exchequer and the dialogue of the Exchequer, it explains so many things. And I'm just going to read the very first um, sentence. It's not even a paragraph, although it's it's uh, indicative of one. Um, In the name of, whole, of the Holy and Indivisible Trinity... Frederick, by favor of divine mercy, August Emperor of the Romans. Since human memory is short and does not suffice for a crowd of things, the authority of those who preceded our age, the divine emperors and kings, has decreed that those things were to be written down, which the progress of fleeting time generally removes from the knowledge of men. So this house the House of Geln had come in and said, well, since sheeple have the um, very, very small attention spans, they don't have a, a long-term memory, I'm going to come up here and do an oration, and I'm going to tell the sheeple that there were laws written, and only I know about those laws, so I'm going to uh, promote them to you as a show, as this great... Uh, um, rhetoric. I mean, you can go back to the to the actual. It's called the Great Rhetoric, and and find this very same thing spoken. You can find this very same thing spoken with um, the Apology of Socrates, written by Plato. You can see all of these things. The Ath um, Athens Constitution, uh, supposedly written by Aristotle. When you go through all of these things, and you see these. Um, great profound orations and, and shows that they were putting on. It's like, it's no wonder that the sheeple fell backwards. They started laying down because they were so pretty. And all of these things, including, you know, one of the most um, uh, heavy 
was, of course, the apology of Socrates. Socrates was accused of perverting the minds of children, and, and um, instead of defending himself or instead of saying, no, I, I didn't do anything wrong or anything else, he got up and he did this significant oration, you know, oh, men of Athens, and he, and he maintained as a patriot. And he was telling, you know, the audience, of course, that includes us because we're now reading it as a play or reading it as a dialogue or a discourse. Uh, and that's another thing. Discourse is always a discourse. It takes you off of your course. And, um, you know, it, when you go back to, um, you know, the writings of Protagoras or the writing of Protagoras by Plato, and you find that, you know, Plato was the protected one himself. Protagoras, of course, stems from the word protege, meaning the product, protected one. So he was hidden all that time. And Plato and Platonic love and all of these different concepts, concept after concept after concept. You've got Eros and you've got uh, Agape and you've got Philia and all of these different concepts and different things and different degrees of things. Degrees are also concepts. Uh, levels are also concepts and all of these things that we've been presented with all of our lives throughout all of our lives it's just perverted our our whole entire being it's allowed us to live in such a fiction where all of these things are dancing through our heads and it really is so much like Oz you know um, who I forgot who's the writer of Oz or the Wizard of Oz um, you know we've got all of these things are just swimming and swimming through our heads at all times. And then, of course, we've been taught that these are laws. We've got people with guns that are promoting these things to us. And we've got these symbology and, and these people in robes, these uh, attorneys in black dresses. We've got things that look so big and so um, uh, ominous. You know, we've got... They look so important in their Armani suits, and they look so important in their big cars, and they look so important in their huge mausoleums and their huge buildings with these um, uh, columns and towers. And all of these things, it's all an illusion. All of these things, it's all a show, and these are all symbols for us to worship and for us to pay homage to them and, and assume and, and submit to them uh, because we're... We, we're of the the nature of we have a trusting nature that's what we do human beings trust each other and that, and that's something that's you know makes me most angry is the aspect of uh, the perverted word of trust and everybody um, that I speak to that believes in different um, variants on law and, and trust law that's that's a big one that pisses me off the most because you you're sitting there and you have on one side you have you and another you know which is life you've got the male and female parts of all life and you have the actuality or the physical reality of trust you trust each other and you actually your abilities differ because you're you're of different parts of each other of the same thing and in that trust you're protecting on one side and and he's protecting she's protecting and you go back and forth and and as to the physics you're always of course orbiting each other you just it just is and then you have the perverted form under contract law which is the aspect or the character of trust and instead of being a real trust now you have the character of a trust then you have it goes further out so you've got a fiduciary that's a character presenting as a trust relationship so you've got all of these perversions and as you get further and further and further away from the origins you get further and further away from life and language takes you there because without the ability of language you would not have all of these concepts and so everything's being written down and you're being taught all of these things on a continual basis and the languages change according to market conditions. If they need a uh, absolute product, you're going to be taught English. And English is the most efficient means of redistributing the human population because it's the language of commerce. And when you go back to Arabic, it's a second person language. Or Aramaic, it's a second person language. When you go all the way back to um, Hebrew, and of course these are all created at the same time. When you look at the 
diet critic. That's the most important aspect of the study of language is looking at the diet critics or what is known as the Latin accents. Now, Latin is the language of contract, contract, so it constructs all of these languages. And everybody's speaking Greek. However, it's all strung together and called something else or it's written backwards, or it's written upside down, or whatever else, but, you know, these things, um, for example, if you, I know this is hard for our new listeners, um, you know, start out with the Roman alphabet, start out with the Latin alphabet, you'll find out that it's the same one as English, and then you go to the um, Greek and Latin roots, go there, and, and you'll see this, and it, and it plays out, it's so perverted, um, but eventually it's so precise. And getting back to the diacritics, those are the sounds that each um, syllable makes. And in the Greek language, for example, um, you have the French diacritic, although France didn't occur until way after Greek, right? And, and, and I know this is very, very hard to wrap your mind around um, the... Um, all of this stems from the original texts put out by Homer, which are the Homeric hymns. And if you, the Homeric hymns are very, very condensed and very, very um, small in, in how they're, they are appearing. Well, from the Homeric hymns, the attorneys, especially George Crote, has been able to pull out or expand on those Homeric hymns to the extent of, I think it was 10 volumes on the history of Greece that's written for your mind, the sheeple mind. So it, you're filled up with all of these concepts out of their original texts. And of course you go over to Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey and you find, you know, oh goodness, many of these things that I thought that I knew they're actually fictional. You know, Agamemnon, he was fictional. Uh, Sparta was fictional. That was a creation of the mind. Um, all of these things, although these places exist, they can name these places, the concepts do not exist. Those are just concepts, and they were created uh, for your benefit so that you could be a product. Now, um, let me see. I was reading about Gelnhausen. Yeah, we've already spoken about the um, um, you know, let's see the Constitution. We've gone over the Constitution. The um, let me look here at the. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So. I'll, I'll read the act of surrender of the Great Charter of New England to His Majesty of 1635 for, for an example. Because when Congress was here, before they confederated, they were already incorporated by being together. They were banding to their, together in incorporated states. And, um, of course, they were perverting God's word and calling them crystal, Christian. Um, to all Christian people to whom this present writing shall come. The president and council established at Plymouth in the county of Devon for planting, ruling, and governing of New England and America, saying greeting in our Lord everlasting. Whereas our late sovereign Lord King James of ever blessed memory, by his highness, letters patent under the great seal of England, bearing date at Westminster, the third day of November, and the eighteenth year of his majesty's reign in England, France, and Ireland, and of Scotland, the fourth and the fiftieth. Upon the motives, reasons, and causes in the said letters patent mentioned and contained, did for him his heirs and successors, grant, ordain, establish, and confirm his then right trusty and right well-loved cousins and counselors, Lodwick, then Duke of Lennox, Lord Steward of his household, George, then Marquis of Buckingham, then High Admiral of England. Now, let me repeat that. George, then Marquis of Buckingham, then High Admiral of England. 
Now that was George Washington. Now the second name here is James then Marquess of Hamilton. That is James Hamilton. And then we go on to William then Earl of Pembroke. That is actually William Shakespeare. Earl of Pembroke, of, of course, um, was William Shakespeare. And then, now, and here, here's the, the little tongue twister here, or the mind twister. It goes on to give these things to then Lord Chamberlain of his household. And that the word household is with a capital H. Going back to the etymology of Chamberlain means chamberlain steward or treasurer of course stemming from the word uh, all the way back to latin meaning cam uh, camera chamber or room that is the chamber of commerce now and the house of representatives and these things are all concepts and, and i know that this is very very hard to uh, wrap the mind around i had just as fun a time as you are years ago and then it goes on, who are since deceased. Now remember all of these other charters, everybody's dead. They're all gone. They just told me what to do. So I'm doing it. So here you have the absolute action of fourth generation warfare, pointing the finger at other governments. You know, here's another government for you guys to look at now. And now I'm going to present to you some laws. And of course that stems from the... Um, exchequer and um, so let's go on who are since deceased uh, Thomas now Earl of Arundel and divers others of the nobility and gentry of the realm of England therein named to be the first and present council established at Plymouth aforesaid for the planting ruling and governing of New England and America aforesaid now remember that they're using the word America here in 1635 by the way when the United States of America was not proclaimed until 1777 with the um, Articles of Confederation as a style or chain of events, which is congressional actions. It's just a act after act after act after act. And all of this show is there for you to believe it exists. This is all put on for you so that you can patronize this thing and they can make a dollar off of everything that you do. Your life as their little actors except for you're not being paid as actors you're being um, paid quote as beneficiaries in this play and and in doing so uh, it is to your demise um, governing of New England and America aforesaid and then they said Dukes of Duke of Lennox Marquess of Buck Buckingham which of course is George Washington Marquess of Hamilton Earl of Pembroke and Earl of Arundel and the said others of the constitute and established to be one body politic and corporate and corporate in deed and name by the name of the council of Plymouth aforesaid in the said county of Devon for planting ruling and governing of New England and America aforesaid to have perpetual secession and of course secede means to take over the estates of with divers and other powers, privileges, immunities, provisions, and restrictions for the propagation and establishing of true religion in those parts, and for the better regulating of the same plantations. Now, remember when they put on the big show that said that we seceded from England because they wouldn't allow us religious freedom? Government is a religion. They, they are formulating a government here. Indeed, a name one body politic and corporate as it says in the act of surrender of the great charter of new england to his majesty in 1635 as in and by the said letters patents do reference thereunto had more plainly and at large appeareth now know ye that the said president and council most gracious sovereign lord charles by the grace of god king of england scotland france and ireland defender of the faith the said letters patent to the duke of lennox Marquess of Buckingham, which is George Washington, Marquess Hamilton, William Earl of Pembroke, Thomas Earl of Arundel, and to the rest of the nobility and gentry of his of this kingdom there named for the planting, ruling, and governing of New England in America aforesaid, and all and every the liberties 
licenses, powers, privileges, and authorities therein and thereby given and granted or mentioned to be given and granted, and all there and every their right, estate, title, interest, claim, demand whatsoever of, in and do the same, letters, patents, licenses, powers, privileges, and authorities, and of, in and to every or any parcel of them, or any of them, in witness whereof the said president and the council have caused their common seal to be put to these presents, the seventh day of June, in the eleventh year of the reign of our sovereign Lord King Charles, and in the year of our Lord God, 1635. Now, these letters patent, remember that they can only have those by description. So they were going out, and they were finding those that were lost at sea. You're lost. And the minute they told you what you are, oh, that's Erickson. That's Johnson. That's Smith over there. He's a blacksmith or silversmith. These are their concepts. Those They own those. Those are letters patent. And they're describing you as now a thing. A concept. Now they have the patent on those concepts. If you are not a sovereign being... A sovereign state of being you are holding on to something that belongs to them and you're renting that by copy hold ability and you're drawing easements through your body by which they can part you out and that is the action of being rendered you are being crucified simply by accepting those names and titles that's it and of course Jesus can't pull himself off the cross, right? Once you're nailed to that cross, you need each other. Not a government, not an uh, oppressive force, not somebody to give you these names or, or steal you by trick and deception and action of psychiatry. You need each other. Humanity. And not those that are going to take advantage of you. The minute you come across a psychopath, you already know them by their works and actions. And that, that's the mark of the beast. And humanity, I already know you by your works and actions. That's the mark of God. You're the one that acts like God. You're the one that walks as God and talks as God. And you do no harm. It is very, very simple. Except for the only aspect of this whole entire show and, and everything that's been created for you, this fictional, illusional place has simply perverted everything that you know and taught you something else by which to control you. Prior to that, you couldn't be controlled. You, you cannot be controlled if you're not subscribing or underwriting the policy. You know, at the beginning of the first hour, um, I was speaking about Bo's mom and everything that's been happening, and everything was sold to her. It was so pretty. All of these beautiful advertisements and, and hospital setting and doctors and nurses all dressed up in white, and they've got these shiny pins and, you know, others, military involvement. They've got these shiny pins and stripes all over their uniforms and uniforms and all these colors and and um, other, you know, artifices of, of heraldry is what that's considered. There's so many symbols that we see and so many things that we see. But in reality, you know, we come from the earth. We come from the earth. And, and so many of these things that, We've been subjected to and exposed to throughout all of our lives. You know, we've got years and years and years of exposure to these symbols and shiny things and bells and whistles. And it's no wonder that, you know, so many of us bought into those things. And, and as I've said years ago, I, I would have, and I did, I argued when I first started reading, um, Henry Mackow, I, I thought he was nuts. I thought, oh my gosh, this guy is crazy. And the more I read, and the more I studied, and the more I researched, I was proving and evidencing that he was not crazy. He was speaking the truth. And 
throughout this walk, it, it has been the most profound journey for me to evidence these things and realize I mean, it's 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 all been a cartoon, and here we are in flesh and blood, and that that was something that happened yesterday as well. You know, I was I was trying to explain to to a fellow human. Um, he says, "Well, I want to go into court. I want to I want to prove that I'm alive by proving that I'm a man." And and I, you know, f of course, the first word out of my mouth is, "Man is a legal creation." But then he he threw a fit at me for a while and he's like no I'm right here I'm right here I'm right here and um yes you're there as this state of being you yes you exist there's there's no way in hell that you know you don't exist here we are we hear each other we see each other we're looking at each other and we're in a relative state of being it's the concept of those descriptions man and woman and female and Feminism and masculinism, Zionism, Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, all of these things are just concepts. Those things are the things that are sold to you. But in a relative state, you're just a relative state. Um, in the law, when you look at the creation of the law, the closest you ever get to being is actually in posterity, being a post heir. And the reason for that is that you always have that interpleader, that attorney, the adversary, or Satan, is always interpleading into your estate, garnering it before the heir can make himself known. And so the closest you'll ever come to being within the law as it's written is posterity or being a post-heir. It's after you were, and in between that is an attorney with his hand out waiting for your inheritance. And that is the action which is unlawful on its face of probate court, of family court, of the court of exchequer. All of these things are ways and means of garnering your estate before you can be made known. That's the bottom line of the whole entire game. And that is the entire reason that Jesus said, know thyself, period. There's nothing beyond you. There is no other authority. Uh, these fictional courts, you know, you go back all the way into their original acts, into the original houses. Those are all fictional concepts. Those are all ideologies and thoughts of thoughts. That's what an ideology is. First is an idea, and then it's an ology, which means thought of. So it's a thought of a thought. And so all of this time, humanity has been controlled by thoughts of thoughts, ideologies, and political constraints, and law. The word law actually literally means to lay down, and that's what Jesus was trying to say. When the resurrection, not reincarnation, when the resurrection occurs, which means you're able to stand again, that indicates and evidences that you're already here. When you are able to stand again, this ends. And in that, you have to get out of the cartoon. That's it. Stop purchasing from the law merchants, which is what, Revelation 18? It says once you stop purchasing from the law merchants and you stop fornicating with the Lord God, which is uh, 1 Corinthians 6, you can only fornicate by giving your body to the Lord God. Once you stop doing that, you come out of her. And that, that female indication is because it's a matriarchal influence. That's the female mindset. You know, the psychopathic female mindset is the matriarchal presence. And once you come out of her, Babel, then the law merchants wail. The merchants are wailing now. And so all you have to do is stop buying the concepts from inception which means man, woman, friend, female, male, all of these titles, mom, dad, just drop those titles, drop the concept. And that is the means and mechanism for them to make money off of your body. When you subscribe to being a beneficiary, I'm retired, I'm a veteran, I'm disabled, 
I'm whatever. All of those concepts allow you to purchase those things from the law merchant. The law merchant is the one selling you those things. And each time you accept those constructs or each time you accept those concepts, you are partaking of them. And it's a huge tree of knowledge. It's got tons and tons of branches on it, doesn't it? When you go all the way back to the inception of the etymology on, on uh, that tree, the Fide fig tree, that's the fiduciary. And it's selling you all of these things. How does it sell you those things? Through trust. What is fiduciary? The character of a trust. The character. That's a fictional being. A character is something that is written. It's a fiction. So we, we need to walk away from this fiction and live within reality. We have to stop accepting these things and partaking of the tree of knowledge. Stop participating, which is another word for partake. And when Jesus signifies, you know, don't eat that, don't eat that, that's what the word partake means. It means to take in, eat it, consume it. And in this society, you're actually called the consumptive good. And you hear this all the time. It's a consumer society. Well, what's the story of um, Cain and Abel? Cain, signifying chaos, consumes or cannibalizes ability. Well, why? Well, Eve took off with the Lord God, and she pushed Adam out of the family, didn't she? She pushed the male out of the garden. And she accepted the Lord God, and she took all of this shit that he sold her. And what happened? She created children that consumed each other. Now open your eyes and look around. We live in a consumer society. And it's not just Cain and Abel. I've got, you know, you've got, you look across the street, you've got an informant right over there waiting in the wings to inform on you. You've got, uh... You know, uh, the cop next door, you've got the um, teacher next door, you've got the patriot next door that's waiting in the wings to inform on you and consume you. What can you do for me today? I don't want to do that unless I get something out of it. What can you do for me? That's consumptive behavior. So once you identify that thing, you need to get away from it. Get away from it. And then you start living. Be living rather than living as the walking dead or zombies and um, I know this is hard uh, when I first started realizing all of these sick and twisted things that are happening um, what helped me most was um, Descartes, uh, Rene Descartes uh, uh, meditations on first philosophy and um, of course, Dante's Walk, uh, the um, uh, Divine Comedy, and uh, in that, you know, he, he speaks about purgatory, which is right now the question state. You're in a question state. You're not sure where to go, up or down, and you've got um, paradise and the inferno, and uh, Dante describes all three. You've got the three different levels. You know, you've got hell being in the hole of the ship. Um, which is the exchequer. If you look in the uh, Black's Law de definition of the exchequer, and um, you've got paradise, which is the ascension, rising up out of the form that you've been put into by description, um, and maintained as in form. You know that that's all. That's what it, all of that is. It's informing you. You're being formulated to be something else described or written about and in that form that's the dead that's the walking dead because you're always a fiction in form when you're claiming to be a man or a woman or all of these these other things that are concepts and ideologies and thoughts and thoughts and fictions then that allows you to look at yourself from afar rather than being yourself from within the self and that's where your authority actually stems from is that relative standpoint and that's where we need to be that it's where the human being needs to be to be um, that's a requirement of your absolute survival because the psychopath is gunning for you um, it doesn't have any 
empathy. It has no compassion whatsoever for humanity. And it gets off on using you as its product under corporate design and policy. And in that, um, it's facilitating genocide. When a product is no longer useful, it gets rid of it and cuts the overhead. And if you want to read about that one, um, you can go to 1928, the company at Churzow, um the Bear Corporation, had come in as the Republic of Germany and indemnified Poland. And it said, you know, all of the Polish citizens are um, a drag on our overhead. I mean, they're just costing us too much, so we're going to off them. And at that point in time, what you saw presented in the media is Nazi Germany, but it had nothing to do with racism. It was all and everything to do with corporate policy and so many people, human beings, being on uh, social programs, welfare programs, social security, um, things of that nature, uh, relating to the action of hearts and minds, because the reason, the way that they catch us is to offer us benefits, sticks and carrots, and um, if you want to learn that about that, uh, the title of that document is Sticks and Carrots in Procurement, and you can read about how they dangle that fishing line in front of you, then the shiny things in front of you waiting for you to swim by and just bite that hook. Be well, everybody. We'll see you next week. Same place, same time. Don't forget Saturdays right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Be well.